Hello everyone, this is Jason for Primetime Aquatics and today we've got something really cool to show you. We recently went to the GCCA picnic, did a tour of Rick's fish room. He is a GCCA member. Really nice fish room, a lot of cool fish, very clean, very organized. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stay tuned. So over here, okay. these are some Cyclosoma Jafirum from Colombia. Um, they're related to Cyclosoma feste. Um, they're kind of aggressive, not overly aggressive. These are um, some ones I raised up from when they were about an inch long, so they sort of get along their brother and sister. This is an 8 foot, 240 gallon tank. And the tank on the left is a 5 foot, 150 gallon tank. And in that tank are black belt cichlids and also some Jack Dempsey's. There's one Jack Dempsey up front. And they're getting along okay, huh? Yeah, they so get along fine. The black belts um, came from Rick Perez in our club. Nice. And um, again, a Central American cichlid, an unusual cichlid, and sometimes they'll, they're found in, in salt water. So they'll actually go out the river into the ocean or canal, then back up the next river. Are they about max size? Oh no, not even close. No? No, those are babies. Babies? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll get a solid foot and very, very thick. So they're called black belt because that big uh -huh. black belt down the middle of the fish. And they get they, that orangey or pink color and they're starting to really color right now. Yeah, they're but I got those as babies. And then these guys, are they, how much bigger are they going to get? Are they pretty much... These are four years old. Okay. Um, so I suspect they're pretty close to full grown. They normally 16 to 18 inches, okay. and then we're getting close up there. Um, if we can get a shot of them front wise, you can see how thick they are. So they're, in, you know, a couple inches, two and a half inches across the front. Yeah, they're really big. Aggression wise, I mean, you, got, you said three Relatively males. Relatively aggressive yeah. fish. Um, I'm assuming this guy here is the dominant male. Yeah, the biggest one's that's, the dominant That's male. his lady right there. Yeah. And Possibly someday. Yeah, you know, she. they have spawned before, but um, none of the eggs survived. But mm -hmm. they've been bred in captivity several times, so Very cool. hopefully soon. And if All you right, want, so we can take a look. Yeah. So on this side, there's 425 gallon tanks. And here are fr some several from the uh, Enrique River in uh, South America. I think it's Colombia. Could be Brazil. Don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see the big males have the, stri the striations in the face. The females, like this one, don't. So that's how okay. you tell them apart. They usually spawn on a vertical surface. Not for me yet, uh -huh. but usually what they do. They Sunday. still need some soft water, which I don't really have. So th this male here is about max size, would you say? I think he's pretty close. Okay. Yeah, these are about three years old, okay. probably. But they're very gentle and nice fish and very pretty. And I like the markings on them. I got. A green that's maybe maybe that size. The gold sevens that I have are yeah. not quite that large, but these guys well, seem quite. A lot large. of these fish, you need a big tank to grow them up in. Yeah. Otherwise, their finage isn't good, and of course, you need clean water. Sure. And down here is a little bit of a mishmash, but um, the, these this blackfish over here is a male, and these ones are the females. Okay. This is Seratheridon carolinae from Lake Barombi Embo in the Cameroon, so it's endemic only to that lake. Okay. And they're considered threatened or, or endangered because they're only found in that one place and there's a lot of pollution around that lake. Um, it's not the best looking fish. The males, when they're very happy, when they're spawning, turn jet black, a velvety black. The females stay that tan color. Now these? They're a mouth brooder. Okay, I was going to say, you got a few holding females in here, it looks like? Uh, or is it just the way their mouth... They, they are planktivores, so they oh, have a scoop uh, there. I see. And they'll... Uh, and they'll uh, hold a lot in there. This one might be holding. Yeah. I can't tell from my angle. But I've got lots of babies, and we can. The babies are gigantic. Okay. They're you know half inch to three quarter inch long when they come out. Oh wow! You guys, you got the lepthernaps? Yeah, one. I, the female I left up in another tank. Um, okay. uh, actually, no, I have both of them. I have a pair of lepthernaps intermedius in there, yeah. and um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and also good. some some Eutropolis, Eutropolis suratensis from okay. uh, India. Very or Madagascar. Nice. No, India. Sorry. <laughs> okay, coming around to the main aisle here. Coming around, this is a tank of some Perkthes Labradans, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I got those from Pete Durkin. Nice. And um, I use a lot of these tubes. I call them cichlid condos. They have thin wall PVC, which I glue together. Ah, that way they can't knock them all down every day. No, I've had those for 20 years, and they, they're great in tanks. They have tons of them. Very cool. Down here is Therichthys Mukulapinus, actually. I mislabeled the tank. Oh, okay, because they look a lot like the ones I have, and I've got the same Yeah, it's Mukulapinus, and okay. there's some endlers in there. They said it was to them when I put but them just in leaving there. them alone. They're leaving them alone. 
You, you've read these ones yet? Not yet. They're getting up towards breeding size. They should be breeding soon. I've got them on a 33 long, and I've got two pairs in there, and they breed on both sides of the 33, but then if you don't pull the fry or do something with them, they just wind up missing. Yeah, Very they're sad. little tiny babies. Yeah. And these Vieja heterospias aren't coming out. They're very shy fish, even as adults. And they get big, as they're Vieja. Yep, and they're cool they're looking too. that rock yeah. there. Yep, they're there. You can see the little face a little bit. But you got some cool anglers in here. Yeah, just standard black bar anglers. I love them. And um, here's some paratherapsin and spilum. Some spilum. Um, they're growing up pretty nicely. Again, a uh, Central American cichlid. And uh, though they get quite big. I was going to say, don't those, those get considerably larger than that? Yeah, I, I got them as like half inch fries, so I've been growing up for a while. And they're getting along okay so far. Yeah, I have well water, so I do better with the Centrals and South Americans with my water. Okay. Although I've started to get back into Africans. There's a Copatochromus chrysinotis. These are cool. Yeah, they should start coloring up pretty soon. You yeah, see you can start to see the males. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a few ones that might be males in there. And those were I got from Matt Skwarzyk in our club is little fries. I've been growing them up. And that's the great thing about being in a club is right. access to a lot of interesting fish and uh, and knowing the provenance and where they yeah. came from. Stuff you don't find in a pet store often. And then you see my, my three dovi over here. I keep them individually because they will kill each other. <laughs> um, Even at this size too, isn't it? Oh, they'll kill each other at an inch long. Yeah. Um, they're very intolerant. In, in the rivers in Costa Rica where my son dived with them, Males often have, you know, 30 meters of territory. Yeah. And anything that comes in that, they either eat or they, they breed with. And they eat most of everything. Um, but they get, you know, they get two feet long. Right. So they're big, but they're beautiful, very intelligent fish. But they're killers. They they're sure stone are, killers. But they're beautiful. And down here, I just have some koi angels that I got at a GCCA swap meet about maybe a year ago, I think. And they've grown nice. up nicely. And we have some decent color on them. And it's, you know, angel fish are pretty. And I'm just, yeah. I've bred a lot of fish. I just keep them because I like them. Yeah, you got the slate there, so you never know when you're going to have some, some eggs yeah, and Yeah, they babies, haven't right? really shown any inclination to do that. Someday. Um, I, uh, I do breed some of the dwarf bristles plecos. There's about four yeah. different sizes in there. I find them super useful. Just if you have a tank that's breeding, and you can just take them out and throw them in another tank, clean it up a little bit, and move on. Yeah, so you can see this tank, which has plecos in it, and this tank, which uh -huh. doesn't. Now, I can't put a pleco in that yeah, tank, though. Yeah, they will. Because that guy will eat anything. He sure will. And, and they can eat things up to a third to a half their length. That's something. And here are just some red guppies that were bred by my friend Brian Anton. Very cool. Look at that. That's a nice strain. Yeah, they're pretty. So I've had some of those guppies, I think, from Greenwater, and they were calling them pink flamingos, but... They're just red guppies yeah. as far as I know. And I'm not a line breeder. I don't yeah, do that. I, but, I, I mean, think it was just wishful And these are just wild Brazil guppies. Uh, no location, but they they came in that way, and you can see the variability that's in there. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just got them because they're wild and I yep. thought they'd be interesting. So obviously they breed pretty well. And uh, over here is Limia perugiae, a couple of nice males. And uh, I won the brother to these. I won best of show at the ALA convention the with. ALA, wow. So they're really pretty Those fish. Are pretty. Um, Those are gorgeous pretty. fish. And the females are in the tank right next to them. So you keep them separate, they'll beat up on each other? Or yeah, they're a little tough on the females. females. So okay. I will put the male in there when I, after I get all these females conditioned and then I'll put them back together. There you go. And then this next tank has, I don't have a hard time focusing on them, but these are Poecilia species Brocopondo. So these were brought in recently by, I think, a Dutch um, group out of Suriname. And I don't know much about them. They haven't bred for me yet, but, okay. or at least I haven't seen the fry. These I love. And down here are some Capatacomus borlei. They're just starting yeah. to color up. and. Uh, they have the nice red finish. And there's also some, uh, they're really Tilapia Snyderite dark version. They were originally came in as Coptid on Bacchusorium, but okay. Anton Lamboy was here and he said they're Snyderite. Interesting. So now, do you think those the males would get any darker if it was on a darker substrate, or do you think they'd stay that nice? It might. Because it I like the contrast the way it is right now with, with the body compared to the fins. And it's one of the things I always worry about. You put something on a dark substrate, they start washing out on you a little bit. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of black gravel. Yeah. Um, and then, so here we got some Pundamillion. These yeah, are just some Pundamillion Nairi from Rudy Island. Those are cool. They're going to be really pretty on me. Yeah, they're just little. They're just kind of coloring yeah. out. And fortunately, I still have a male because I found one on the floor last week. Oh, dang. He goes 
and went out through that little tiny hole. Isn't that something? They always find that one space. We've got some neon swords. Neon swords. Awesome. And so you are obviously part of the GCCA, but also Chicago Library Society. Yeah, I'm president right? of Chicago so, Library Society. I like libraries too, yeah. and I've been collecting them in Mexico, and a lot of them have really bad conservation status, so yeah. uh, we try to maintain them. And these are some fish I'm holding for Jason Labassi, which is Copatochromus and Benji. So it's been a bag, they're very rough right now, so yeah. we'll try to get them going again. And yeah. like a female that doesn't look like she's going to make it. Hopefully they'll be okay. And then down here, that's a male dovi, but probably a male dovi. Okay. Now the dovi, because you've got a, a location name here. This one's from Lago Arenal. So Lago Arenal is a lake um, in Nicaragua, I believe. Okay. But it's a man-made lake, so nothing is really from there. Uh -huh. So it's just where this one was collected. It's probably the same thing that's in all the rivers. Okay. It wouldn't. So there's not really. I mean, you wouldn't see any morph morphological differences you wouldn't you see you can see some color differences okay. depending on the river some you'll see some yellow ones and then you'll see some blue green ones okay that are out there the yellow ones are highly desirable i think they're the prettier ones yeah. i haven't seen them in a while and then down here these are some lady trophies mm -hmm. from Fonga from fonga red and um come on Rob, right on right on time yeah perfect guy they come out, and these guys have, have, have spawned a few times for me. Yeah, those are pretty. I've got to pull them out, and they live in those thick you've got You've got the condos, so they, they're happy. Yeah, yeah they love that. Them. They go in there, and there's even some endlers in there because they can't catch anything with their mouths being downturned like that. Uh -huh. And here's Baby from the Cer uh, Cerotherodon Carolina. And, um, you know, real big, I've got, these are about two months old, I think, okay. two and a half months old. So they're an um, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, getting, getting up there, but really robust little fish. What do you generally feed your fry? Um, flake and pellets and mm -hmm. you know a little bit of everything. There, these guys are not picky. Yeah, they'll eat anything and they'll they'll hoard it up in their mouths and eat it later, like a chipmunk. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not the prettiest fish, but it's one that we. It's a carous fish mm -hmm. and one we I try to maintain. It's just the one I've chosen yeah. to look after. So the, one of the things I noticed when I first walked in, you've got these tanks, uh, fish room, and it's quiet. It's really quiet in here. So filtration, are you running primarily air? I mean, maybe we could talk yeah, I'm running air. So um, if you take a look up here, almost all my tanks have these corner matten filters okay. from SwissTropicals.com. And there's a jet lifter, which is a tube, and a venturi, where the air comes out of. Okay. And um, in all the tanks, it's about two inch foam. In the bigger tanks, it's three inch foam. Okay. And um, it's, you know, it's got tremendous biological capacity. And so I do like it, you know, kind of quiet. I, I have linear piston pumps for mm -hmm. the air. That keeps it nice and quiet. So you're, you're, you're pretty much, you're running air, corner mattens in a lot of them, sponge filters in some. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in terms of water, how are you managing the water? Um, so I do 30 to 50% water changes in all the tanks every week. Okay. And if you notice, um, all my tanks are drilled. You can take a look over here. So okay. I have a bulkhead here and it's drilled. I can drain it just by opening this. Mm -hmm. So if I turn that, you'll hear it start running right away. Right into the wastewater system. And all the water goes down here into tubes. Under each rack, there's a four inch drain, which goes okay. out to a sump. So when I built this fish and we broke the concrete, ran the pipes. Nice. So getting floor drains is essential. Yeah, yeah. It's... And then plumbing it. And then uh, going to all the tanks, I've got manifolds with valves, okay. and so I, I put water right in. So I'm not moving any hoses between tanks, and that Good. helps avoid disease and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, all the tanks also have an overflow, so um, that means that if you forget to turn off a tank, <laughs> it'll give you some leeway uh -huh. over there uh, to do that. And also, if you want to run a drip system, you can do that and right. have an overflow and go down the drain. Right. Um, over here in the corner is where most of the magic happens. Um, water comes in um, either from my water softener or directly from my well, which is what I'm doing now. So okay. I'm, I'm getting all the minerals, which is good. Yeah. Um, and then this is a Haas and Telefaucet, which is a thermostatic mixing valve. So I can set it at whatever temperature I want. It will maintain it over time. Oh, nice. It goes through a carbon filter. I do have, have a volumetric flow valve, which okay. I can turn on. So if I wanted to only put 50 gallons into something, I could. Nice. And then I choose each uh, of these manifolds goes to one of my racks. So I can choose I which rack I'm going to feed. And so okay. there's eight on this system. 
And I can also tag off here and, and drain some water. But my favorite thing in the fish room is the sink. The sink is amazing. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a restaurant sink and it yeah. makes it really easy to do your work. It's from Advanced Tab Co. And it wasn't that expensive, I think 700 bucks. Yeah, and I bought a faucet for it. And that way we can keep things really tidy and clean. Yeah. And, um, well, and that's, I mean, and also I couldn't put any other tank here, so we're top perfect. So it kind of sort of saved a little money and it kept your fish room clean and the organization. It's just awesome. You've got yeah, that's, I've got to bands. thank my wife for that. You can see her handwriting, which is legible. Yeah. And so she is great at organizing and she came in here and could help me put like with like and yeah. it makes it easy. I've got my fish bags and everything, mm -hmm. everything has a place. And, and the um, floors are nice and clean, guys. Check out the floors. There's not the yeah, This is epoxy with, with color chips in it. Yeah, and it's real durable. And um, it's pretty easy to mop up and clean. I, I uh, swiffered it today. I'm a big fan of keeping fish rooms clean and organized. It's a lot more enjoyable when you can walk around. It's hard to do it consistently. And I'm not going to lie, I did a lot of picking up before you guys came over. <laughs> As we all do. Yeah. And so this is one side, but you've actually got another well, room, right? Yeah. And Which also, uh, this is. Um, this is a Panasonic Whisper bathroom fan, oh, and this is hooked okay. to a humidistat over here. You probably can't see that. So right. when the humidity goes about 50%, it turns on and evacuates the room. Very nice. So that keeps it fresher in here. Well, and that also keeps it a little quieter too, because I know the dehumidifiers that I run, it's... Well, these, this noisy. is just real quiet. Yeah. And it, I mean, you can't even hear it when it's running. Um, all my racks have a linear piston pump like this one. So you're, run, are you running one pump per rack, or is it one pump per room? So I have, have there's a one for this one. Okay. There's one for per rack, a small one per rack. I see. Okay. That way, if my pump goes down, redundancy. It does, it's a yeah. redundancy. Yep. I have an extra one too. Did, did you see this? this? This is very nice. All of the nets hanging there. Isn't that just that so is nice. nice. Yeah. We appreciate we the net little organization. Thing. Love it. The little thing. So Kasha is showing us the awesome net organization. Now they're organized by size. I see. Yes. Huh? Very cool. Do you have a mechanism for disinfecting nets or do you worry about it? I do. Um, that's in the sink. Like a lot of times um, I take the nets as I use them and I put them in a bucket. Yeah. Uh, and then every so often I'll, I put a little bleach in my sink. And sure. I'll bleach them and then hang them to dry. And just drying them alone, it makes a huge difference. Right? Yeah. I, Not much can survive that drying process long term. So if they're completely dry for a few days, I, it's, yeah. that kills a lot of stuff. Yep. So, all right, let's, so let's uh, check out what else. I'll have RO water run over here. Ooh, nice. I'm ready for that. I'm ready. Also, yeah. these guys, a little glare if you film them from here. All right, I'm going back. It's a secret. All right, all right so, so here we go. This is my to... second fish room. This one is my normally cooler. Uh -huh. This one I keep at 73 to 74. Okay. In the wintertime, it's 68, 69, or 66 even. Okay. The other room's tropical. It's got a room heater. And this one I just heat with a little Varnado fan. Okay. And this room is primarily libraries and mostly Gadeids. Ah, uh, so, yeah. so I became interested in the Gadeids primarily because of their awful conservation status. Uh huh. Um, and um, so I've been to Mexico collecting them. Um, I do have some cichlids in here, but these are um, the Black Prince, Caracat on Audax. And I'll tell you, I've been watching, I've been looking more at the Gadeids, and they're, they're really pretty. Really they, they're they're interesting fish, but they're territorial like cichlids yeah. are. And you can see that um, if you watch them, that they court their females. Yeah. And the more sexually dimorphic are, the more they court. And that's true of many fish. You know, they look different because they need to attract the girls. And so these ones aren't doing too well in the wild. They're found in only a couple locations. Mm -hmm. And this next one is extinct in the wild. Oh, this wow. is Caracana audax from Los Pinos. Were these displayed at Aquashella? Are these I, the ones I don't that know if these are on display or not. Okay. But these ones, again, similar body shape, uh, but these ones have reddish tails or a line. The females don't have much color. And the endlers are just kind of chilling out in here, too. You know, huh? my purpose with endlers, I'm trying them here, is that, you know, these crack and then eat their fry pretty aggressively. Oh. So my thought is if they're used to having smaller fish in the tank, that they'll ignore them. You have to figure out. So if you look up there. here, here's some of those. Sarah, I, let me turn the light on. Sure. Sarah Theridon Carolite, Carolina Fry. Oh, well, they don't like there the light. Go, yeah. But you can see they still have their egg sacs. But look how big they are. Yeah, they're big. Really yeah. big. Huge fry. They're really easy to raise, and the females are great holders. Like the size of, you know, the Cipachromus sometimes, they spit those out. The biggest yeah. I've seen. So these are good old black bar endlers. I just, they're really pretty. I've always had them, and 
they, these guys don't eat their fry as much as guppies, right? These guys don't eat their fry at all. At all, okay. No, I, it, guppies generally don't eat it. Yeah, I, I've got a couple guppy tanks, and they just keep spitting out the fry, and I don't. It doesn't seem like I lose very many. No, I mean, you can see how many tiny ones are in uh -huh. there, and they're they're great. And I, I use them as dither fish. I sell them. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, I fish. do the same thing with the guppies, just as as dithers to get some of the more shy cichlids out. Yeah, uh, they're so great. They start with, coming out. They leave and also, all. they're really pretty. The males yeah. are gorgeous. I mean, they're gorgeous little fish with the orange and the green on them and blue, and yeah. they're really pretty. They sure are, and uh, really nice fish. I mean, there's some Dalmatian mollies bred by Litzy in our library club. No, but. These mollies are just running pure fresh water. Oh fresh yeah, mollies. Yeah. Mollies. It's a myth that mollies need salt. I've never had good luck with them for some reason, but these they're are actually, really pretty. Yeah, they're really pretty. They're kind of slow growing, um, and they're actually hard to transport when they get big. I don't think they do well. Nah, they're nice little And then That's you can see another dovi. Oh yeah, look at now. This one's now. This one's got different colors, or at least. It was just not as He's a yet. little freaked yeah. out as I did a major tank cleaning on him yesterday. Didn't appreciate And that. these big, these cichlids, because they're so smart, they don't take to change very well. They no. don't like it. Like when you move tanks, it often takes a week or more Yo, to come yeah. down. And you can see just a lot of plants there, but this is Poeciliopsis prolifica. It's a tiny live bearer that supposedly is very prolific. Wow, that is small. Um, very small. Um, you know, one of the smallest live bearers there are. Got some heteriander formosa at home, and those guys are really small too. Yeah, those are great fish. Yeah. They're super fetacious. They drop fry all the time. Oh yeah. And this is um, Zugineticus tequila. And so this is actually the fish that's on the Chicago Library Society logo. Oh, and cool. um, I've done the, these guys started breeding recently. I haven't had them very long, and there's some fry in there. You might see in the plants. But this is a way that you'll see a lot of library guys keep these fish. It's sort of a lazy way to keep fish. You have a yeah. ton of floating plants. Yeah and you usually get fried to survive. But with the Gudeids, don't buy them in a pair. You gotta buy six to eight individuals, preferably 10 to 12. Okay. And in a big tank like this, they're a social fish. They, they work well together and, and they like that. I did just come up with this invention. This is yeah, a little so Trader Joe's um, cookie container, Okay. Uh, which I cut the bottom out and halved. And then I put a couple suction cups in there and it keeps the plants away so I can feed through the top. That's really smart. Yeah, I got some pictures oh, of that, wow. so I'll make yeah. that one of my tips. So. That, yeah, that is definitely... I was wondering why those were there. At first I thought it was something to do with breeding. I'm like, well, there's a... They're missing the bottom. That can't be it. No, not so much. All right. So and over here are some Xenotoka doadrioi. So this is a different version of the red tail gadea, and these guys just dropped fry not too long ago. Oh, I see, see some, some little there, ones yeah. in there. Um, and uh, they do well. The, the, these are young ones, So, but when they're fully caught up, they're red and black and yellow. They're, the males are really spectacular. Yeah, they're nice. And, and then, you find that most of that moss kind of protects the frog. It gives them a little bit of safety down there. Also, you know, the cool thing about moss is if you go on vacation, there's a lot of stuff that's there living is. in there. Yeah. And, you know, the fish can survive with that. Yeah. Over here are some Lago Catamaco sortels from Zephaphras calmani. And these guys, I'm told, take forever for the males to come up. Okay. And I've had these about eight months, so it's going to take a while so, more. It's a little bit of patience. Yeah, yeah, they're trying my patience. They, they need it. <laughs> they need some. Oh, oh, here over here is this, some Therichthys Pancho VA. I like the colors. They're more subdued than some of the other Therichthys. I think they get more a little bit blue yeah. later on. Um, and I just have some miscellaneous light bearers in there to dither them. Yeah. But I got these as half inch fry not too long ago. And they've, they've done pretty well. Growing, growing all right. Nice. Here's another good day, Xenotoca variata, Jesus Maria, which is one that's pretty prevalent in the hobby. Okay. And um, these guys should start, they get a lot bigger than this, and they'll hopefully start breeding. Nice. But I'm really proud that actually the plant's growing, because it's been a, a real <laughs> struggle with my water until, until I figured it out. Yeah, you said you got well water going I have there. well water, and I bypass my water software, and I only... In these tanks, if I do big water changes, I lose the plant. So I do maybe 20% now. Is it coming out pretty hard out of the well? It's, it, it is, but it's not well buffered, okay. really, which is odd. So, that is interesting. And it varies. You know, in the springtime, it, it can get, the pH can really drop. I would imagine because you get more rain and that's winding up in the groundwater exactly. and everything. Yeah. It's really hard to figure it out if you're on a well. If you're in city water where it's consistent all the uh -huh. time, it's easy to keep fish because you know what to do to your water. But right. it's that's different year round here. And this fish is El Toco Dugazii from Rancho Molino. These are just sentence of fish I collected down there myself in 2014. 
And so this is an interesting good day. They throw two colors of males. You'll see mostly the black males over here, uh -huh. but there's a yellow male oh, right there. That. So the weird thing is, in the wild, we mostly find yellow males, but the water is very turbid. It was very, it was hard to see it. Okay. In the tanks, in clear water, you get all black males, and the females prefer the black males. Okay, but in nature, see them. it'd be tough, yeah. So it's really interesting. It would be interesting to kind of line breed these with only the yellow males, but they throw both colors. That's interesting. Um, in the wild, they were, you know, really pretty and very chunky. Um, you can't really see it in this female, but in the wild, and especially older females, they get the females are good looking too. They have a, they get electric blue spots in the side. Ooh, They're pretty. interesting fish. That is really nice. Very cool. And again, like my other fish, and this is all plumbed exactly the same way. Yeah. And I can see you've got the central air piston pump. Yeah, yeah the air piston pump runs this whole room, and um, I use I, I do most of my plumbing with PEX. It's very easy to work yeah. with. Um, and, uh, and that way I, I run those out to uh, uh, centrally. It takes a long time to set the fissure like this. Oh, big time. And I had to, like, no, I had to learn how to manufacture that piece. You know, and I was impressed because exactly. I use, I've been using a lot of the same uh, material for lids. And this is, I think this is the four mil. And one of the problems I was having is water would get in these yeah, regions still, here, but then I, you put the plastic sides in there. That, that, yeah, that, so you can use that silver tape. Mm -hmm. It's even better. It's easier. Yeah. I did this, and, and like some of them, I found that sometimes the the channel had bent out and it wasn't sealing very well. Yeah. So I would do it different next year, next time everyone would make changes. Absolutely. All right, so final question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Advice for people keeping fish. What are, What is your tips? Just generally speaking, if you're new or... Do your water changes. That's the You can mess up pretty much everything else, but if you do 20 to 30% water changes every week in your tank, um, that will keep down the pollutants and uh, get your fish growing better and get them breeding. That's the number one thing. You can mess up your food, you can mess up your plants, you can mess up everything else, but if you screw up your water changes, you'll lose fish. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the other thing is start with good fish. Buy them from someone you know, yeah. someone you trust, preferably another hobbyist right. or a pet shop that you trust yeah. uh, where they really quarantine their fish and then bring them in. And for the most part, I get fish from other hobbyists and, and I do really well with them. Yeah. And, and then you can get information about the fish and you transfer that information. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big hobby with a lot of very interesting people and, and get to know the people in the hobby. And I think you know, YouTube's a great place to learn more about it too. And, sure. um, and you get out there and you can, you can have one tank and do a great job with it and you should be proud of that too. Absolutely, well we really appreciate you taking us along for the, for the tour. Happy to. So thanks again. Welcome. Bye bye everybody. All right everybody, so that was Rick's Fish Room. It was a really cool experience. Again, just being able to see how people construct their fish rooms, the thought that goes into it. You always pick up some good ideas and some new ideas when you look at somebody else's setup. And I certainly did that while we were there. So if you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.